Huh. Man, every time I turn around, you're just standing there with your three skinny legs and your one eye just staring. It's uh, this first snowstorm of the year keeps getting pushed back. I got an extra day and then I got an extra day and now I got another half a day before it hits. I think we're supposed to get like, now they're saying seven inches or something, but it's basically all overnight tonight. It's already the afternoon. Been doing a bunch of other stuff. Haven't had time to work on my heater, but it's definitely time to take down my summer tent. And I'm trying to think if I want to take it down. I do have my mountain tent that I use all winter long. Could pop that back up. The nice thing is all the crap that's in my tent can go right back into that one. But I'm also thinking it might be fun just to take a few days not have a tent up. You know, it's been two years and what nine months or something that I've been living in a tent out here. So. I think I spent, I better spend a total of a week and a half in there. It's one time when my back went out and actually one of those nine or 10 days was two nights ago. I was editing a video waiting for it to upload and somehow I dozed off, woke up at 2 a.m. and I'd run my Jackery all the way down to nothing. Probably burned up half a tank of propane, but whatever. It's kind of nice. It's kind of nice to w wake up and be warm. But, you know, if the plan is... Whenever I get the cabin done to move in there for the rest of the winter, I guess I'll have to get used to not being in a tent. It really, it really is kind of, in my mind, an ideal life to live in a tent like eight or nine months out of the year and then just for something different, stay in a cabin when it's like really gnarly out, you know, well below zero and tons of snow. So I'm thinking for the heck of it, I'll just take this down. Gosh, I don't know how the heck I'm going to dry it out. It's not really room in the man cave to do that. Maybe I'll just have to ball it up and let it be frozen for a few weeks or a few months or something until the heater's up in there. Once the heater's running in there, actually, no, the heater will be working in a few days and there's tons of space to hang this up. Okay, that's what I'm doing. Let's get rid of this thing. And then if there'd be like, what, an hour left of the sunlight, we'll try to hook all the uh, black pipe back together to uh, plumb the propane in for the heater. You guys saw in the last video, I think it was the last thing I did, pulled out all the stuff that my dad and I worked out, got it all laid out. We even laid it out on the ground, figured it all. Yep, that's exactly what we need. And then uh, the last video, I tried putting it together and right where the pipe goes through the wall, it was dead on into a stud. So I did go out, man, you guys are gonna crap yourself when you see just how creatively this is all put together. They're gonna be about maybe 15 or 20 unions, you know, where pipes screw together and couplers and all that. So it's gonna take uh, probably three or four pounds of Teflon tape to get it all sealed up. Two great things about setting up tents on this deck is one, it's the flattest thing you'll ever set a tent up on. And two, you don't have to screw with stakes hitting rocks and stuff. Just screw each one down. Oh yeah, this is not an expensive uh, tent. It's a Eureka, a Eureka, but it does have a lot of guy lines and a lot of uh, connections to the poles through the rain fly. I like that. It's got at least 12 Velcro tabs inside. It really helps when the wind gets going as long as you got it all guyed out. I mean, this has been up for, I don't know, at least six months, just like it sits there and never had any issues. Two more Velcro tabs. This is no joke. Oh man. You can tell that's been up all summer. Just full of bugs. Holy cow, I might have to put some of those in my collection. Oh, that's a lot of bugs right in the face. Can you do that with your house? <laughs> Didn't think so. Well, that feels weird. Real weird. It's not time to think about it. We need to make some heat. All right, so, well, heater goes right here pretty much. Have to figure out what height to put it. Don't need to know that right now though. That heater is sitting right here inside. So that's where we're gonna go through the wall. And then the pipe has to come down here. I think I showed in the last video, I've got a, a Y between the two 
tanks that has an automatic switcher over her. So you put it on one tank, when that tank runs out, it automatically clicks to the other one. And then you're able to pull the one, the empty tank out, fill it, bring it back, hook it back up, and you know, it'll keep switching automatically. But I wanted to put it right here because it's going to need something to sit on. So I figured it'd be easiest if I could build up off of this concrete pad. Actually, I might even be able to attach it to the log there. It goes from the, the two tanks to the splitter and then runs along the wall, turns a corner, goes in there. So we couldn't, when my dad and I were shopping for this stuff, we couldn't find any long sections of this three quarter inch uh, black pipe. So all we could do is do 12 inch pieces, hook them all together, and the tanks were going to have to sit right here. I don't really want that, so that's what I just found when I went out the uh, last couple days. I got a really long section to replace this one of half inch. So, of course, that means a bunch more fittings. Maybe not the way you'd choose to do it if you had uh, access to unlimited uh, pipes, but I don't. So, we're going to make that work. I also need to extend this guy out a little bit more. If you can see right there. It somehow ended up going right into that stud. So I got some extra fittings to extend it a little more. Man, I bet this is going to end up being at least 20 pieces all put together. Which is alright. I mean, as long as I tape it well, it should, should work. This is the half inch. It's going to run down that back wall. Alright, so... I'm going to go from half inch. I'm not going to bother taping these yet until I make sure everything fits together. To that. To that. Okay, that works. Same thing on this end. Reduce it down. And then this is the trap. So that looks like it'll all fit pretty well. Good. And unfortunately, this wasn't long enough to stick through the wall, so... <laughs> Got a couple of those together. This ran into a stud. So we got to extend that a little. And then that'll plug into there. And let's just go ahead and make sure we'll take it outside make sure it all fits let's see oh perfect length to get to the propane tanks down there and that's uh five inches from the stud so that should poke right through the wall so we just need to figure out how high to put this whole thing this might work out well i think i'm gonna put it down as low as low as i can somewhere about yeah about right there's good Floor is 13. That's about there. So the top of the floor is one inch is there. All right, so that's five inches up off the floor on the inside. That seem right to everybody before I start drilling holes. Just want to make sure. Looks pretty dead on that way. That's all that matters. I feel like I should say, uh, before I bought this heater, I watched some YouTube videos to figure out which one to get. This one is, there's really a low range, like the standard direct vent heater. Direct vent, I guess, just means uh, no electricity, no fans or anything. Uh, the bottom of the line, which looks like there are tons of them out there, are like maybe in the $300 range. And then the one I got is somewhere around $800. I think there's a smaller one than I got and a bigger one, so I think... Yeah, I think I paid like, I don't know, 800 bucks or something. And then there's a jump to like two or three times that price. I don't know what the difference is. Uh, everything I read said that this one was great. I was certainly wasn't going to spend, you know, two, three grand on a little heater for my cabin. As it is right now, the heater cost almost as much as I have into the entire cabin. Crazy. Anyway, my point is I watched several YouTube videos trying to figure out which one to get. And of course you see how people are installing them and everything. You get a couple tips and tricks. I hope none of you are watching this video to see how to install one of these. As always, this is this is surviving ringworm. This has nothing to do with teaching anybody how to do anything. Unless you're someone just looking for instructions on how to have a good time, because I am great at that. So I can't tell you if I mean I guess I'm installing it right if in the next week the place doesn't catch fire and I don't blow up. 
But uh, if you're looking at getting a heater yourself, just do other research. Don't don't learn anything from me. I make everything up as I go along. And that's how the cabin got here. So, all right, what do we do? Drill a hole? Got to find something to drill a hole with. So I'm going to need a 5 8 say, 3 quarter inch hole all the way through there. But I'm going to have to do a pilot hole because I don't have a drill bit that big to go all the way through. If I can do a small one, then I could get a hole saw in there and cut that out. And the good thing is, you guys, if you watched the last video, that's why I put all the wall boards on on the inside with screws instead of nails because I assume at some point I'm going to... Oh. The snow's starting. At some point, I'm going to need to pull the wall boards off to figure some of this out. I actually don't really know how the uh, heater gets mounted in there. I I mean, I assume they don't expect you to tear the wall apart, but I'll probably need to. Aha! Did you catch the mistake I almost made? Anybody? Anybody? These are just barely finger tight. Then that hole's not going to be just in the right spot coming through the wall. So this does need to be taped up and cranked down first. I need some pipe wrenches. I've got one pipe wrench. That's good enough. I'll use the pipe wrench. You guys hold the other end. Seems fair. It'll work. Trust me, it'll work. One thing I know about this, like if you're doing Teflon tape on something for water, like a water hose or something, you can go right up to the edge and sometimes you accidentally go over. This stuff you don't, I should have started a little bit further back from the edge just so you don't end up with these little strings inside there. Let's see how much difference this made. Oh, yeah, like three quarters of an inch. <laughs> it's a good thing I plan all this so far ahead and really think it through. Okay, I guess that seems right. Do we dare? Do we dare? Oh, it'd be nice if I could level that. I'm trying to push it through and see if I don't pick up all that insulation on the way. I must have picked up a lot because it yep oh man i bet it ripped all the insulation right out of the wall well let's go see where it came through it's getting a little bit dark in here but that looks great about five inches off the floor so that'll pop through and then this flexi will hook onto it actually that end with the shutoff valve well before it gets too dark i want to drill let's see actually we just need to drill that hole on the outside I could do the inside tomorrow when it's snowing. I'll try to do the same again, not not jam it through there while it's spinning and rip all the insulation up, see if I can just barely cut through. Oh, there we go. I guess we'll just do this one temporarily too, just so I can get the hangers on there. Ah, uh, you know what? This actually is going to need a block behind it, I think. We'll just screw it on for now. It'll, the screw holes will get covered up if I put a block here. Alrighty. Looks good. Despite the huge pain in the ass it was to get all that stuff, that goes together pretty easily. Guess I'll see you tomorrow when uh, I'm waist deep in snow. I'm always a little skeptical as to whether we're actually going to get the full amount of snow, but as, as the time gets closer and closer, they keep up in the number. Let's, let's see what they're calling for right now. Five overnight tonight and uh, three in the morning before noon. So, all right, we'll see you then. Maybe we'll hang the heater up. Want to get a good look while it still looks like summer out here? Bet you it won't look like this tomorrow.
Oh boy. Now see what you've done? Holy Moses. <laughs> it only ra it rained. It only snowed like two inches last night and this all has happened in the last like three hours. Man, it's pretty deep. Looks like, I don't know, maybe 10 inches or so. I'm only coming out here for a freaking frying pan. I don't like to cook inside. I always cook out here, but I'm going to get soaked standing out here. I'm Clearly, I'm not going to fry me up a bologna sandwich in the middle of a snowstorm. <laughs> yeah, that's a good chunk of snow. Oh, let's see. of those maybe a spatula that ought to do it i think it's supposed to be wrapping up soon here so get a little food in me and then uh if it's still coming down i guess we'll work on the insulation <laughs> this is a, a rarity i'm in a plane ahead i gotta get a bucket of ice from out there put in here I'm uh just the last couple days been leaving the heater on in here as low as it can possibly go it's maybe equivalent to like five candle flames or something but it keeps it just above freezing and uh, I'm gonna need a shower eventually so I think I've got I don't know I got quite a few buckets of ice left over there they're almost almost solid right to the middle there's maybe a cup of water and a few bubbles and right in the center of the block but I think I'll throw one in here by the heater and at least by the end of the day, it'll be a little meltier. Speeds up the process of uh, getting it up to temp to shower. So yeah, I'm gonna go grab one of those buckets. Maybe I should take this insulation out right here and fill it full of Twinkies, just in case. Yep, that ought to be just fine. All right, now the question is, how do you get these all screwed together? Let's see, this one, I guess I could tape and put on through the wall and crank it tight. It won't spin because it's locked in here. This one still needs to be tightened down to here. And then how do I tape all this? Just take that off, spin that on. This actually goes on the bottom and then I could tighten it from the bottom. Cool puzzle. <laughs> I wonder, yeah, if you had to do this in a spot where you couldn't kind of pull this apart and you needed a lot of turns to it. I don't know. Maybe there's always a way to do it. Wait a minute. It's not going to work because this thing still needs to get screwed on the top. You can't screw that when it's against the wall. I might have to take this entire thing out, put it all together, and see if I can slide it all right back in. Maybe I could just screw a block on here to hold it up when I slide all that crap back in. I knew these cutouts from the stairs were going to be really important in this building project. I'm using them only because they're the only scraps that aren't buried by snow right now. Just make a little shelf here. That's the first time I think I've ever heard a jet go over here. Weird. Uh, 
do you get that out? Can't use pliers on it. Maybe use the clothes. This looks like BDSM here. Here we go. How tight are you supposed to make these? Anybody? Anybody? So it does have screws in the back. I had a, like a mounting plate that I had to take off to fit here. I'm wondering if it's even necessary. I think I'm just gonna leave it like that. Let's see what kind of platform we're gonna need. Uh, a foot almost. Yeah, it's gonna have to be up there. I'd like to have a platform and maybe just a box just real low down on the tanks that they just set into real easily, not have to like strap anything. I guess for the time being, I could just make a box to, oh, right down the neck. Make a box for them to sit on just so they could be hooked up and then tarp it. Because this does need like a little roof over it. R roof, roof. It's all pretty tight, except for I think I need a block right there. It's very important to have a reversible workbench. If you're interested, I'm selling them for uh, $129.99 uh, this week only. See how my frozen batteries do. Yeah, it's not the right size uh, clamp, but that's all right. It'll keep it from yanking out of there. You know, I considered uh, getting all the lumber out from these piles and putting it inside before it snowed. I just figured I didn't want it in the way. Now I kind of wish I'd done it. Well, the good thing is before it snowed, I arranged everything so there shouldn't be like boards laying out like they usually are. I think they're just in those piles. And that's all the lumber for the inside here. Hey. I don't care what I have to do once that heater's working. Can you imagine what it would be like to just open a door and walk into a room that was warm all the time? I think I'm going to be famous for inventing this. So, 11 more connections here. <laughs> oh jeez. And then this should go on here. We just need to mount the heater where this will reach to it. Looks like we do it right in between those studs there. Oh, here you go. Here's a heater right here. Something like that. <laughs> Sorry if I keep repeating myself in every video, but this is probably the 10th time I've said that, but I know some people start watching the videos now and haven't seen previous videos. I'm eventually probably going to insulate on top of this floor and then put another floor on top of it. Partially because after I started using this planer, I saw how beautiful all this aspen is. I can't plane this now because the walls are sitting on top of it. It's got nails in it. It's dirty, everything. So I would like to put a beautifully, like I'll chainsaw mill all the aspen again, let it dry one way or the other, put it through the planer, and then finish the whole floor. So that'll look really sweet in here. The other reason is that the floor joists are odd spacings. If you look at the floor stood up on end, you know, the frames like this for the floor and the joists actually go like radiating out because this, this building's not square. Of course, because who builds square buildings anyway? Because of that, the insulation on the bottom would have to be odd shapes. But also, 
if you insulate from the bottom up, you still got to close in the bottom of the joist so the critters don't get up in there. So I'm going to, if I have to mill all this lumber, you know, this much lumber over again, I might as well make it pretty and put it on top than just put more crappy stuff underneath. So that means I got to think about that when I put the heater in here, if I only want it like 12 inches off the floor, eventually the floor, the new floor is going to get built up on top of this. So, oh, so I may have just put this uh, propane in too low here. Well, nothing I can do about it right now. I guess if the new floor gets built up this high or higher, I'll just have to uh, re-drill this hole and move everything outside up a couple inches. That's not too big a deal. Uh, I just can't move the heater up because I got to drill a big hole through the wall. So I'm going to put the heater up a, a little bit higher than I was planning to. Let's see. This says minimum distance from floor seven inches. Let's see what 12 looks like. I guess the closer it is to the floor, the more the hot air, you know, the more room it has to rise. You don't want it way up by the ceiling or anything. And down here, this is... You can actually see the flame in here, so it's a little more like a fireplace. It'd be kind of nice if it was down low like that. And then, let's say we're going to raise the floor up six inches. This is about six inches. Yeah. Well, let's see if this reaches. Yep, that's exactly where we'll put it, and this will reach perfectly. 17 inches up. Who took my tape measure? Oh, here it is. So the bottom is 17 right at that screw there. All right, now what are you supposed to do? I keep bouncing back and forth from inside to outside, trying to think which side should I do first? I just looked, it's supposed to be 15 degrees tonight and barely warmer than that tomorrow highs tomorrow in the teens which means uh my battery powered tools won't work and i don't know if you noticed but i don't really have electricity out here or electrical tools normal tools so anything i, I build has to be with the uh, battery powered tools so i think i'm just going to make a box right here to set these on before my camera freezes and my ryobi batteries freeze See if we can find some scraps. I kind of like to do it just in case it does end up sitting there all winter. Kind of like to do it out of cedar. I wonder if I have any. <laughs> I think I have some one inch uh, cedar scraps under that pile of snow. Maybe I got something under here that'll work. Yeah. That looks like one inch. Ooh, those are perfect. If I had two more of those, I'd be all set. And I don't. Here's some three-quarter inch, three-quarter inch siding I cut off for the stairs. I found some rafter tails left over from building the cabin from putting the roof on there. This is going to be a short-term solution, but hopefully it'll work. Just the platform for the day, or, you know, the season, whatever. Oh, we needed some damn heat. Is that so much to ask? That's even the right height. Oh, let's do the empty one. A little high, a little high. Yeah, we'll make it work. I really want to do this the right way and build something that's going to last. I kind of hate to just put a little, you know, some scraps of lumber together and <laughs> a rubber band around it, but uh, I'll just rubber band it for now and then. Once the heater's in, the insulation's done, then come back out here and do it the right way. I promise, I promise. Hey, that's not too bad, huh? It's not the uh, classiest thing I ever rigged together, but it's okay. Whenever I grab a screws for something like this, I need four screws for four holes. If it's winter time, I always grab five. Chances are very good I'll lose one. There we go. All right, this shouldn't go anywhere for now. Okay. God, that's ugly. 
like how I took the time to route the edges of this block. And then you go around the, con the corner and see that, <laughs> like a dead hunter. Okay, let's see. Uh, I looked over the instructions a little bit. You know, when you see pictures of this heater, all you ever see is, is the front of it mounted to a wall and none of this. So the best I can figure, let me show you what it comes with, if you're interested. Two mounting plates and the screw holes line up right here. So this goes on the inside of the wall. This one goes on the outside. Looks like you just use uh, wood screws to hold it in. This comes off the back of the heater. This sticks out through the wall. So my guess is that the hot air probably goes out through here and it draws cold air through here. That would make sense, right? That plugs in and this all has to be cut to the right thickness of the wall. But it's very specific instructions. It's like to the 64th of an inch. If it's supposed to stick through this far or this far. <laughs> but I think that's what you're supposed to have on the outside. There's a a lot of slop in that. It's going to take a lot of caulking. Unless, of course, there's something I'm not thinking of or not seeing. So I think this whole thing gets cut out. This is a roll of sheet metal that I think will unroll into that opening. It probably has to be cut exactly outside wall to inside wall. That would make sense. So that pushes all the uh, uh, insulation and everything away. So you just have a big 9 and 1 16th inch hole that's filled up. And then this will float through the middle, I guess, and just be held up on the outside by the plate and the inside by the plate. That's what I can figure. So, okay, let's cut that sucker out. So, let's do it this way. That's the center. I guess I could just cut this, cut it out with a knife. I think I'll do a circle. I don't have a compass, but... I'm going to use my calipers and scribe it. Maybe not the best thing to do with my expensive calipers, but that should work. I think I'm just going to pull this wall board all the way off, or two boards all the way off of here. You'd holler if uh, it looked like I was doing something wrong right away, wouldn't you? Before I cut a hole through the wall. I'm sure you would. Oh yeah, it also says to mark those or these. Those are these. Those are these. Mark the 5 sixteenths mounting holes in the wall. 5 sixteenths. That's 5 sixteenths. That's 5 sixteenths. Guess that's it. So it must just be three screws that actually mount the heater to the wall. And then these four are gonna be for the plates. The other thing it mentioned in the instructions is that you don't drill this straight through the wall. It says two degrees. You want a two degree run so that water doesn't come into it if it gets inside that sucker. How they expect a knucklehead like me to figure two degrees is beyond me. Maybe they just mean some degrees. You just want some degrees down. I can do that. I'm going to mark these two just for the heck of it. Just cut it out? Oh. Maybe I should read the instructions instead of just guessing. Mark the holes. Mark the ventilation tube hole. Oh, and the mounting plate screws. See? I did that on my own. I don't need these. These are to kneel on. Ventilation must be rectilinear with a slight downward slope of two degrees towards the exterior to avoid rain water infiltration. Fancy words. Don't they know the kind of people that are putting these heaters in aren't real smart? I don't read much book. Uh, cut out the ventilation opening. Install the mounting plates. It doesn't mention it, but it seems like I'm going to have to drill straight through the wall. That center hole so I have something to reference. Right? How else would you figure out where to put the plate on the outside? Let's drill a hole. Let's hope I don't hit any uh, electrical wires in the wall or anything. <laughs> Stick that sucker on there. That's square. And we want two degrees down. Does that look like two degrees?
All right, I guess that's two degrees. Somebody just shot themselves a buck. Did you hear that? We got extra holes in here. The picture doesn't show them, and nowhere does it say what those are for, so I guess we'll assume they don't make it. They feel like they go down, don't they? I think they do. Aren't you glad I put this all together with screws? I bet you are. I don't see the hole. Oh, there it is. So cut a circle out like that too. You stay there, I'll grab the paper. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> we just need the screw holes for the plate. Is that it? So I have to cut this with a jigsaw too, which means I gotta go back inside and cut the insulation out, kind of push it back, right? Right? That makes sense? <laughs> Ryan, you've never said anything that didn't make sense. Thanks. Well, I should have marked that hole on the insulation while I had this together. Need a smiley face. Very important. It says on the instructions, make sure you put a smiley face on the insulation before you cut it out or the whole thing will catch fire. Oh man, these are my good gloves. Freaking hate insulation. Not gonna get them all. Prickery? Prick, prickle, prickery. You know what? I'm going to cut this out tomorrow because the wind's supposed to pick up and all this snow is going to blow out of the trees instead of get, getting a bunch of snow inside the wall. Oh man, it's a gorgeous morning. It was uh, 14 when I woke up. So <laughs> again, it was kind of nice to be in the man cave with the heat on as low as it goes. It was, uh, when I got up, it was 14 outside and 40 inside and 40 is like perfect. Uh, interestingly, you can see what happens if you uh, have a heater on for days inside a place with no insulation. Yeah, the main part of the roof has almost no snow on it. And then also this uh, outside edge here has tons of snow and ice because everything's heating up melting sliding down and then when it gets to that edge there's nothing underneath so it's back to you know 15 degree air and it freezes all up and you get some fantastic icicles I'd be curious to see in the big cabin how many icicles it gets it's gonna have a uh, two by six insulation in the ceiling which is you know it's not fantastic if you built it like a normal house, I suppose in weather like this, you could put that insulation in there and then you could even go and blow in more insulation over top of it. So you got, you know, a foot or something, but it'll just be what it is. I mean, it's cool that I'm able to stay in there comfortably at these temperatures. And I cranked the thing on high this morning, the heater, which has just got like two grill burners in it. I turned them both up and I got a little Ryobi fan. I put by it to circulate some air and, you know, took two hours, but it got up to 60 degrees in there, which... I mean, this time of year feels fantastic. Hello? Nobody. Maybe a small table for my Mai Tai? Or more likely, I'll use it to fill that hole back in when I realized I was supposed to cut the smaller one. Looks like a cannonball hole. We put the board back on the inside and then... I guess measure that thickness and cut the metal, huh? <laughs> How would you know? The trick I figured is get all the batteries warm, but not, not bring them all out at once. I just bring two out and switch them throughout tools as I need to. 
kind of a pain, but not the worst thing ever. And then as they get cold, I take them inside and bring another set of a couple out. I look through the entire thing. All it says is assemble the wall thimble. That's it. No other information. I think this is what they're calling a wall thimble. I don't know why I don't call it a piece of sheet metal and assemble. There's nothing to assemble. So I guess we just need to, I'm thinking you flatten it out and then that way when you put it in the hole, it bounces back and stays in that shape. <laughs> froze, froze the tip of my marker. I'll just go ahead and uh, assemble the thimble. Thimble is assembled. This wall thimble must be installed. Please refer to page 8 of installation manual for assembly instructions. Assemble thimble. Does that make sense to anyone? Makes sense to me, I guess. Now we want consistency, otherwise the uh, heater won't burn right, so we'll put those two holes down. Really curious what, what those things are for. Probably nothing. Probably use these for a bunch of different heaters and they do something somewhere else. Or could be part of the manufacturing, I suppose. Although, I don't know, they're pretty big holes. All right, I mean, looks good. <laughs> I gotta cut all these. Apparently, 10 and 3 quarters. Actually, technically, it's 10 and 11 sixteenths, but I'm going to do 10 and 3 quarters because I'm a wild man. There it goes, there it goes. It's pretty solid. It's hard to keep all these spacers on here and the screws from falling out. But you know, I'll figure out how to do it somehow. <laughs> All right. Yep. Not really sure what to make of these big gaps between those plates and the pipe. I think it says on the outside you're supposed to putty it in. There's probably a good quarter inch all the way around that thing. Just lets the wind in? I don't know. I guess we won't worry about it for now. That doesn't look too bad. I did put my, uh, exactly two degree uh, slope on that. You can see there's a bigger gap there than there. So, I mean, this screws right under the back of the unit. So what exactly is gonna give it that two degrees? Well, yeah, actually I can see a little bit of slope in it. Yeah, that should be fine. Hook the propane up, see what happens. 
sticks out a little bit far, but uh, that's what you get when you have 12 fittings. <laughs> be kind of nice to have an elbow right there so be close to the wall whatever for now we just need some heat can you feel the excitement in the air oh it switched it switched to black I need to do the soapy water test on all those pipe joints but I have to wait till it's a little bit above freezing which isn't gonna be for a week Pilot light. Yeah, baby. <laughs> so awesome. I tried to light it, held the thing down, and kept clicking it. Couldn't get any flame, and then realized how much pipe there is that I have to clear the air out of before it'd get here. So. so I just turned this off, unhooked this, turned it on, and left it on. It was just air coming out of it. And then once I could smell the propane, turn it back off. And then I just opened the windows in here and left for like 15 minutes. Came back and it lit right up. It's not a whole lot of heat yet. Well, let's just crank it up to high. Oh, you know what? Yeah, this doesn't make it a higher flame. This is just, we'll click, I think it'll click on and off or, oh, maybe it does. Maybe it lowers the flame. I don't know what it does. I'm not used to heat. It's starting. Oh, man, I got cold screwing with this thing just sitting here. That feels lovely. Crank it up on high. Oh yeah, it's, it does not smell good. Crank it on high and leave all the windows open for a while. Get the funk out and then, uh, yeah, I'll we'll close it up and uh, finish with the insulation. It's only like a day left to have it all insulated. And then this place is actually usable. What do you think? Is that little bit of flame going to be enough to heat this whole place up in the middle of the winter? I don't know. Before I built this, I did all the calculators online, like three or four or five different calculators, size of the room, the amount of insulation, whether it's an interior or exterior room, and then all the, you know, BTUs to figure these things out. And the numbers I got back from the calculators were wildly different, like from the lowest number to the highest number of the three or four or five, I think it was like four or five, was more than double. Like you need, I don't know what the number is, just pulling it out my butt, like 10,000 BTUs for a certain room. Another one said 22,000 BTUs. So who knows? We'll see. Right now, I don't really care. I'm just, <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> well, come back for next week's video. I'll let you know how it's, <laughs> how it's running. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take a, a moment in the middle of the day. This is about as warm as it's going to get. I just looked and it's uh, 27 degrees. So I'm going to get out the generator, charge my Jackery up and I'm going to take this opportunity. It's a good stopping point for the day to take a shower. Do that stuff, have a little lunch, and then, uh, yeah, I'm going to work on some insulation. Probably be tomorrow. I got some uh, foam board just to put up in these areas, uh, the window headers, and, no, I guess it's not the door. No, it's not the door. Yeah, just above the windows there. The way I built it, you know, which is just whatever feels right on the day. It only left enough space for a one inch foam board. So we'll do those. We'll finish the insulation in the walls, which really is just this wall and a couple in that corner. And then uh, insulate all this stuff. Those big rolls in the back there are the two by six ins insulation that'll go up there. And I don't think that's gonna take, yeah, I don't think that'll take more than a day. I'm gonna let this, man, that heater really freaking stinks which is great. It lets me know what's working. <laughs> but uh, we'll let the heater run for the day with the windows open, get that stink out of it, get the insulation in here, and then, I don't know, I'll have a party in here or something. I was just thinking this morning that I might rip that fold-down bunk out of the man cave and put it in here. That's going to be along the back there will be my bunk, and I think it'll make it so it folds out again. Like if Sarah comes to visit or something, I can put another thermorest next to that one. This area is going to be kind of open, so what? That'll be like the foot of the bed. And then this will be the uh, big old desk. The part I'm looking forward to the most, other than the heater. I was thinking I'd have to wait on the desk, except, I don't know. Actually, I only need wall boards right there, and then the whole desk can go in, so I can build that. I don't know how far I'll get up here. I want to put some shelves. I don't know. We'll figure all the shelves and stuff out. I was thinking back behind the door will be a good spot for a bunch of maybe some shelves up there and a bunch of hooks for clothes. Snow clothes and whatnot when you come in, you're all wet. 
And then perhaps someday I'll get a little tiny couch and put it in here. And then of course I gotta make cool coffee tables and end tables and all sorts of stuff. Before I build any of the furniture in, obviously need wall boards. And I don't have enough wall boards. I mean, I have enough to do this little area here. But I'm going to have to go back uh, back to cutting trees. I got that one spot that's at the bottom of the shooting range that I've already earmarked. I want to push it back to like 30 or 40 or 50 yards. So there's a like an island of trees right there that I want to take down anyway. So there are some good melon cedars in there. I'll probably cut those, drag them up here. The good thing about dragging them in the winter is they don't get all muddy and they're easier to drag. So I'll drag those up here, mill them, and then uh, finish the wall boards in here. But yeah, since there's heat now... I think I'm going to bring that bunk in here. I don't know. Actually, this is going to be a construction zone. Do I really want to stay in here when it's all constructy? I don't know. We'll figure it out. Oh, and very shortly, I'm going to rip that picnic table apart. Ooh, it's kind of too bad I'm insulating because I could throw those boards uh, from the picnic table up there to let them dry out. They're all iced up right now. If I can get that dried out, then I'll get back to carving your names in the picnic table. Just so you guys know, I mean, some people do a buck a month on PayPal. Some people do more than that. And, you know, fairly often I just get like five bucks or 20 bucks through uh, PayPal. And I've got that set that when it comes in, it goes, that's one of the only things that goes straight to my phone. I don't check, you know, emails don't come to my phone, anything, but they come in. And every time I'm just like, who are these people? This is so amazing that somebody watches my stupid videos and just like, oh, I'm just going to throw them 20 bucks. For as long as I'm doing this and people are donating money, I'm going to keep commenting on it. That it's, it's just nuts and it, I really, truly appreciate it. Like to just get a harebrained idea to pack up all your crap and move out to the woods and see what happens and then have people, you know, support you doing that. I don't know, it's kind of beyond my mental processing ability. So thank you guys. And hopefully, who knows when, soon enough I'll get back to carving all the names in the picnic table. See you next week. Maybe my hands won't be frozen. See ya.